anyone else who cares about the joy of driving can relate to this. I'm about to have my dinner and drive a manual at the same time. Um, I'm going out there all by myself tonight. How crazy is this? I can't believe it's been a year. It was about a year ago, around this time, when um, Common Neowise was all the rage. I came out here with a few buddies for one night to look for Common Neowise. And then I remember coming back out here by myself for a few extra nights to try and improve upon my Common Neowise picture. And that's actually when I decided right here and right here on this on the spot that i'm going to learn everything there is to learn about astrophotography and i'm going to try to do that by myself and um it's yeah and also i was out here all by myself with all these cars uh coming by so it was terrifying but um <laughs> i can't believe it's been a year and i want to thank you guys for coming along with the journey Hey everyone, um, in this video to sort of celebrate my one year anniversary, anniversary with this hobby, uh, I want to uh, sort of tell you guys the things that I wish I would have told myself when I first started this last uh, August. And alongside that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to image the very first target that I've ever tried to capture when I started this hobby last August. And I've been holding off on capturing this 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 uh, this target for a long time because I really wanted to make it a one year anniversary sort of thing. And so tonight I am going to try to capture the Lagoon Nebula, which was the very first target that I picked when I when I first started because I thought it was the easiest to try. You find Jupiter, you find Saturn, and then the Lagoon Nebula should be a straight line across from there. So I figured that was the easiest. So wish me luck. So my first advice to all of you guys when you're starting out the hobby of, of astrophotography is to ask as many questions as you want. Don't worry about you know, how people respond to you. Some people will be helpful, some people will not be helpful, and some people will just tell you to buy this, this, and that. Um, it's up to you to filter out what sort of answers or what sort of responses will make sense to you. But do not and never feel ashamed to ask questions. Uh, you're gonna have so many questions. You're gonna have questions like, you know, what, you know, what refractor to use, what kind of telescope to use, uh, what kind of mount to start off with, um, what sort of exposure time to use. So you're gonna have a ton of questions, but like I said, don't be afraid to ask them. The second thing that I want to sort of advise you guys on or advise myself when I first started was to really get used to uh, any apps or software that will help you learn the night sky. Um, I like using Stellarium, um, particularly the desktop version of it because it's free, it doesn't require internet, so this will be perfectly functional when I'm out here where um, internet reception is highly questionable. And just study apps or software like this and you'll be able to figure out the night sky uh, in no time. Um, okay, so I'm not even set up yet, but here's the first update of the night. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this little pinkish, reddish sort of haze. Well, um, I'm pretty sure that's the nearby uh, wildfire smoke. And it's actually right where Lagoon would be. So, um, who knows what's gonna happen tonight. I, I just hope that I can capture something. Um, maybe it'll be Lagoon with wildfire smoke. Maybe that'll be APOD. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk right through this while I set up because that's actually the whole point of the next sort of uh, tips or advice that I want to give to 
people watching and my former self from last year. And that is to try to set up as early as possible. Um, take advantage of the remaining daylight because first of all, uh, setting up in the dark is never a good idea. It's probably the worst idea, uh, even though we're all guilty of it. Second of all, uh, when you're doing your polar alignment, it's much easier to do it during the twilight hours because Polaris should be the only star in the area that is bright enough for you to see. Uh, if you wait until complete darkness and you look through the polar scope, you will see a, a billion stars. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't tell if this bright white dot is Polaris versus another bright white dot. So if I were you, try to take advantage of remaining daylight set up during the twilight hours and um, you won't have to waste a whole lot of time polar aligning. You probably can't see my face because I'm against a backlit sky, but I just want to capture this moment because I love the transition of the sunset into night into darkness. I just love this little gradient. Okay, so before I lose all the light, I want to quickly go over my setup for tonight. Um, and this is actually going to be really, really identical. Well, I, I can't say identical because I'm not going to be using a filter now that I'm in Bordeaux 5 skies compared to my Bordeaux 9's uh, backyard. But everything else is as identical as it was one year ago, the first time I tried to image the Lagoon Nebula. So what do I have? I have a bone stock Canon T2i, and this is not astral modified. This is bone stock. Uh, I have my uh, broken on 135, which you saw in the previous video. Um, and obviously I'll be using my Skywatcher Star Adventure Pro and just a normal tripod that I picked up from Amazon for, I think it was like $80. And uh, remember, um, I'm not going to be using any filter uh, tonight. So yeah, I just hope I get something through all this uh, wildfire smoke. I'm actually going to try to do this part before it gets really dark. Uh, the camera is going to be misleading because the camera is making it look brighter than it really is. Um, but the next sort of tip and advice that I would, you know, tell my audience and myself when I first started last year was, um, well, use something that you're familiar with reuse whatever you can because when you're out here once you set up i don't care what kind of experience you have in normal photography once you set up your equipment everything else beyond that is going to be new and it could even be confusing to you so my advice here is take all the surprises out of the equation wherever possible so if you have a tripod that you've already used before use your existing tripod as long as it's you know capable and that your gear won't fall apart. Um, and definitely, if you already have an existing camera, just reuse it. Doesn't matter what, what brand it is, doesn't matter if it's bone stock or astro modified. If you're familiar with it, that is a big bonus when you're starting out this hobby because everything else beyond that, it's going to be absolutely confusing. So reuse wherever you can. So I'm still waiting for it to get completely dark before I can start imaging. So I figured I'll take this time to talk a little bit about the Lagoon Nebula. And, you know, like, like I said in the beginning of this video that I picked that target as my first target because it was the easiest target for me to find. Um, you find Jupiter, you find Saturn, and then, you know, usually uh, for most people, it should be a straight line across. Um, and that was, e that was very easy for me to find because in my Bordeaux 9 Skies backyard, you know, that's basically all I could see, you know, just the brightest stars, or in this case, planets in the night sky. Um, actually, when you, if you go to like a Bordeaux 3 or Bordeaux 2 Skies where it's really dark, you can actually see the Lagoon Nebula with your naked eyes. That's sort of how big and how bright it is. Um, and in order to find it, you just need to find the constellation of Sagittarius, which is basically the core of our Milky Way, uh, which would be directly right behind me uh, in the direction of the south. And um, yeah, once you find the Milky Way, look for the core of the Milky Way and then, you know, the Lagoon Nebula will be around there. And 
I'm telling you, if you go to a, a spot where it's dark enough, you can see this little purple dot in the night sky, and that would be the Lagoon Nebula. And, you know, depending on uh, which source you, uh, you go to, the Lagoon Nebula, it's about four to 6,000 light years away from Earth. Um, and it just blew my mind the first time I imaged the Lagoon Nebula. You know, I'm capturing something that's thousands of light years away. Um, how cool is that? <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, using this Canon T2i really brings me back to those early days where uh, I knew nothing and I was just trying to figure out wherever I can. Um, and it really brings me back because this Canon T2i does not have a flip screen. And you probably heard me say this time and time again that, you know, when you get a camera, get something with a flip screen so that you don't twerk your neck and end up with a sore neck by the time your session is done. Um, but it's okay. It's a, it's a special day. I'll put up with this. Hello, Canon T2i. Good to see you again. I think this is actually a good time to show you uh, how powerful star hopping is uh, so you can actually find your target wherever you are. And now Lagoon, like I said before, is an easy target. That's why I picked it as my first target when I first started out. But I just want to demonstrate it really quickly here. So if we look over here, follow my laser pointer. That's Jupiter. That's Saturn right here. And if I hop on over, almost a straight line, Lagoon will be around here. And as a matter of fact, you may even see a little dot, a little purplish dot around or in the middle of what I'm trying to circle right now. And if I were a betting man, I'm sure that's the Lagoon Nebula. So it's really that easy um, if you learn how to star hop and find your own object. So right now I am going to take a test shot to see where I am. Um, I think I should be pretty close um, to where I think Lagoon would be. And as long as I see it in my, in my frame, then I'm good to go. So hopefully, let's see how this goes. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> oh, this really brings me back to uh, this really brings me back to a year ago and I am still just as excited as I was seeing the nebula frame up in my, in my camera. <laughs> so the next uh, piece of advice I want to give to you guys, and I would have told that to myself uh, a year ago, uh, would be earn your progress. Don't buy your way up. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, try to maximize what you have first, whether it's a simple DSLR or a simple star tracker, push them to the max. Go until you think that any one of these particular components is holding you back, then make your upgrade because I guarantee you by then, because you've been doing the simple stuff, you've actually mastered the simple stuff. And so that when you're ready to actually make the upgrade, you can make a, uh, a more informed decision as to what to get, you know, whether that's a, a dedicated astro camera or a brand new mount. Um, I can't tell you how many times, you know, people go on forums or Facebook and they ask, you know, oh, how much should I spend on a setup? And people will respond with like, oh, you need to have at least $3,000 or $5,000. They're not wrong, but there's a lot that you can do with a simple setup such as a DSLR and a simple star tracker, and you can get this going with less than a thousand dollars, and you'd be doing everything that those three thousand or five thousand dollars people are doing. Um, and actually, along the way, because you'd be processing lower quality images by the time you actually make your upgrade, and these will be your own informed decision because you've learned along the way, not just because somebody else told you to get. Uh, this camera or that mount or this refractor because you've been processing and dealing with lower quality images I guarantee you by the time you upgrade your images will be a, a hundred times better than somebody who just sort of bought their way up um, that's what I would have told myself 
a year ago. And I hope that, you know, anyone else watching this video, uh, it will make sense to them to just start with the basics, master it, maximize it, use it until that component is no longer giving them the, the kind of pictures that they want and then make your upgrade. So the last piece of advice that I would tell myself if I, had, if I can go back in time one year ago and also tell you guys right now is that um, take your time. Don't rush into getting the best picture possible. Um, the most important thing about this hobby and spending time underneath a nice sky, it's really spending the time underneath the nice sky uh, and enjoy the experience. I think that those nights where, you know, you get nothing out of, you know, your session because something went wrong or, you know, you, just, you got your exposure time all wrong. Uh, one way or another, you know, you end up with a bad session. Honestly, to me, those are the best sessions because those are the ones that I remember the most. And you know what? The nice guy isn't going anywhere. All of these, um, all of these deep sky objects, they're not going anywhere. So take your time, your results will come. You will continue to make progress. That's the key, making continuous progress. Um, because as I said to myself and other people many times before, um, your final picture, if you put in the time, if you put in the effort, you put in the repetition, your final image will eventually take care of itself. And with that, yeah, I can't believe I've been doing this for one year. And I wanna thank all of you guys who are watching uh, this video, who are subscribed to my channel, who follows me on Instagram, or maybe you just follow me on Facebook. I wanna thank all of you guys for coming along with this journey uh, because I couldn't have done it without you. I, I learned so much from, you know, talking to each and every one of you that, you know, I really learned a lot from all of you. So I hope you will enjoy uh, the final image, compare that to the Lagoon Nebula that I took one year ago and the Lagoon Nebula that I'm taking tonight. And um, I hope you guys will like it. And I hope I can do this for another year. Um, I'm really excited for what the next year will, will, will bring to me. Until then, uh, I will see you guys next time. I wish you all good health and clear skies, everyone. Take care.